into business? Yeah, um, I had no intention at all to run my own business. Um, actually, I uh, I quit a graduate assistant position um, because there was just no joy in that gym, and I moved across the country uh, during COVID, mm. and. Um, got a job as a trainer for a company called Point Guard College. They had just opened up their first ever on-site facility uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. And so I kind of just kicked in the door and I was like, here I am, you can hire me or not. And they hired me. So I got a lot of incredible reps in, in coaching and, and learning how to be a good trainer and, and a good coach through, through PGC and <clears throat> That was supposed to be a three-year gig, and then around one and a half or, or so years, they had to close the doors. Um, just the business there wasn't working out, and so I can remember sitting on my porch at 11 o'clock at night, and it was like 111 degrees outside in Phoenix, Arizona, and shoot or shoot, mm -hmm. it just it just kind of clicked. Um, mm -hmm. And the, that night I stayed up till like 3 a.m. I got on Canva and I made my first like logo and the, the shooter shoot like staple, you know, design. And I put it on a t-shirt and I created a, a campaign for a t-shirt. Um, and all of the donate, all of, I, I use all of the proceeds um, and I gave them all to the Women's Sports Foundation. And that was like how I was going to build this thing. It wasn't really even going to be like, I was a shooting coach already, but like, it wasn't really even going to be me making it my business as a shooting coach. It was going to be more of a brand um, that was able, that I was able to like do philanthropy with. Mm. And <clears throat> then it just slowly, but surely it kind of happened organically. Um, when I found out PGC was closing their doors, I found out, you know, I thought it was just time to bet on myself and here we are. That's good. Con congrats. So, so talk to us a little bit. So, what went through your head? Because obviously, you you just received some really bad news, and how did you suddenly work, go? Okay, from bad news to something positive. Because uh, normally, what people do is they like they'll dwell on it for a long time, and they'll start feeling guilty about it, like sorry for themselves. So, what went through your head? In that moment why why did you say do you know what i need to start something you know i think uh <clears throat> i think i like gave myself a little bit of time to mourn like in between the mo the moment when i quit my job as a ga and then did this already it was like that experience was so hard for me that it was just like, you, you keep it moving. Um, and you know, we've all gone through hard things. We've all like, we've all been through it and I've just gotten lucky. I think in that I've, I've from a very young age, um, managed to like find resilience and, you know, we don't know where, where resilience comes from. We studied it. We don't know. Oh, or am I cutting out? No, no, you're good. Okay. Um, good. Yeah, we've studied it. We don't know where. And so I really think it's just like sheer luck. Sheer dumb luck is how I can bounce back. Um, but I've seen it happen. I've seen it work for me over and over and over again. Like when, when hard things happen, like I cry and I freak out over it for a little while. And then I keep it moving. And that has tended to work thus far. So that's all we have awesome good so tell us a little bit about your business then what do, what does your company specialize in so i'm a shooting coach um so technical pieces of shooting from you know footprint to you know motion all of those very like nerdy analytical science movement things and uh you know the mindset piece of, of course the way we schedule feedback the way we um, add constraints to different training, the way we have them think differently. Let's focus on something different um, so we can train holistically this one single skill. So there's that piece. And then there's the, uh, so my tagline um, is shot development and thought development. So the other piece uh, is 
teaching young people, teaching all people, um, just how, like how to have the audacity of self-belief, um, which is kind of a cheesy thing to just, you know, say out loud, but yeah, that's my why is mo I have very good friends and people I very much care about who haven't been able to find that little piece of going through something hard and, and learning to keep going. And this feels like a good why. Mm -hmm. Cool, like that. So, what what ages do you specialize with? I'm sorry. What ages do you do you coach specialize in? Yeah, anywhere from youth to a uh, WNBA. Um, my WNBA client, <laughs> she just sent me a text message today. Um, about her, her stats right now that she's playing in Turkey. She's shooting seventy four percent. From the three point line, wow, <laughs> Isn't that, that's bananas. <laughs> like, who does that? Uh, that that's yeah. Amazing. So, and then I have my littles who, like, last night I watched a high school game of a, of a team I worked with, and I've got a little seventh grader in Utah who's just mm -hmm. a little bucket, and it's just you know, so I, I'm. It's not really limited to one age group. It's um, but it's very much based in mentorship and like. Mm -hmm. Uh, the bigger picture of it all yeah like that so talk to us a bit about the differences between coaching like younger players and you know girls at a higher level yeah um well it's different in in I think two ways one yeah the age difference and then differences in gender as well um you know coaching men is definitely different you, I mm. mean you there's a different approach needed uh, than coaching women um but with the the youngs younger women to the older women it's really not that different um to be honest with you I mean obviously you use different language uh you take things at a different you take a different angle and training a kid it's got to be a little bit more fun right whereas an adult athlete can have more focused you know conversations and, and things like that but um it's really not that different across the board it's um because that's the thing we all have in common I think is that just wanting to be great like wanting to to keep going wanting to overcome so it's the curriculum on that piece stays the same and with shooting as well um you know anybody can be a great shooter no matter size or shape or whatever um, it just depends on how far we're shooting from what kinds of shots we're doing. If we're doing advanced, you know, are we doing a turnaround fade or are we like just working on catching and shooting? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit. What do, what do clients that come to you, what, what's their biggest struggle that they have? Why, why do they come to you for a solution? That's a good question. So inconsistency is generally if you were putting a, a large umbrella over it then inconsistency not being able to make shots consistently and then sometimes it's somebody whose shot is just like broke <laughs> you know they just <laughs> don't know how to shoot and they'll come to me and we teach them the, or I teach them the way and you know I'm building a team right now and and when that team is put together like we will teach them the way so mm -hmm. that's a uh, yeah, they're rarely coming for something like, I want to do this move or I want to learn this shot. It's how do I overall become a better shooter? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cool. And how how long typically do, do your clients stay with you for? Uh, do you mean like in a session or across like time? Yeah, yeah across time. So I just started this business in May. Mm -hmm. And so far I have eight clients nine clients that are year-round um one my youngest being 12 my oldest being 33 in, okay. in the WBA. so yeah that's a it's a high ticket item you know business wise because it's a lot of time that I spend just on each of these humans just as my job my mm -hmm. job as a, as their shooting coach and and confidence coach and shot development and thought development is to guide them on this journey individually for exactly where they are um 
So it's very involved. It's, it's, it's very, it's not just shooting like, heck yeah, we're going to teach you how to be a bucket. Like we want to, we want you to score all the points, but beyond that, when the ball stops bouncing, mm-hmm. who are you? How, mm-hmm. Who are you? Yeah. Okay, cool. So tell us a bit about the biggest like obstacles you faced before you started the business or when you started. Well, what was the biggest obstacles? Yeah, I think not having, and even now, not having a gym. I, I run this business on the road and I, I go to my clients and work out of their middle school or their high school gyms or um, that's been a, that's been a challenge to try and find a way around that from a business perspective is how can I provide enough value to these athletes and their families without actually being in the gym with them for more than four days at a time. Mm -hmm. And that's been a challenging thing to navigate in business. And then this summer I um, was planning on running large scale basketball camps. And it turns out that I don't really want to do that. <laughs> I, I run large scale basketball camps for point guard college, which I love doing, but that's not really what I want to do. It doesn't really speak to my ethos that we've kind of just been discussing this, this whole time. And so understanding that and now like pivoting again. So that's the hardest part about business is you just have to pivot over mm-hmm. and over and over again while you continue to figure it out and then you think you got it figured out for a little bit and then oops no you don't mm-hmm. you got to do it again so that's been the the most difficult part but it's never been boring it's mm-hmm. never been boring mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> that's good that's good so talk talk to us a little bit what what do you look for when you when you bring on a new client yeah, I, I really only look for super serious players, ones that want to play at the next level. Um, mm-hmm. Not because I would turn away athletes who maybe didn't want that for themselves, but because in in that sort of intense relationship, both parties have to be aligned on the goal. And so the type of athlete that I bring in is is like they're trying to do something. Uh, go somewhere with basketball and the whole time we work through all right awesome hell yeah go do something with basketball go be great but also who else are you Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, so that's a it's a it's a really fun it I was actually just sharing this with one of my one of my mentees Uh, she's out of out of Phoenix Arizona her name is Izzy and I got up at that morning. I had to get up early because of the time change to, to be on this meeting with her. And I like woke up like ready to go. And, and so what all of my clients have in common is I like, I low key like them as humans, you know, they're like really cool people, 12 years old, 33 years old, 16 years old, whatever. So that's what they all have in common. Maybe that's a little selfish of me, but it's cool to like the people that you're mentoring, you know? Yeah. Yeah, very important. Good, because you you made a you made an important point. Because most most of the time, coaches they just want to bring anyone in for the sake of bringing someone in and making right. money. So talk to us a little bit. What's how important is it to filter out bad clients? Yeah, I think I wouldn't even necessarily call him a bad client, but I made a. Um, I made a, I I sat down for a few hours and I just wrote down all of the things that I'm aligned with, that I would want an athlete to be aligned with, with me so that we can have the best possible relationship, mentor mentee relationship. And I can push them Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. into the places they need to go. And so then what I, what I did is I, I put all of that on to a document and I recorded a really long, a 14 minute video that this is what you're, this is what you're gonna get. Please don't enroll in this if you're not ready to commit to all of this. Not because you're you're a bad person, but because like this isn't going to work if you're not ready for this, and that's okay. And everybody's not for everybody, and they have to watch that first before they can even book a meeting to say, okay, let's talk about it. And 
because of that, I don't have a lot of, I don't get a lot of leads. Like I don't have a lot of people that, that click that and listen to all that. And they're like, great. Like that sounds easy. Um, <laughs> but the ones that do, they come in, we meet and we already know based on the fact that they've watched that video that we're in alignment, that we're trying to get after the same thing here. So once they book the call with me, then it's just the, a matter of, you know, here are the costs and how can we work this out? And when are, when am I coming to see you? Mm -hmm. Okay, like it, love it. So you've been you've been part of our program now for a, for, for a while. So talk to us a little, to, uh, talk to the audience a little bit about being part of the program. What what's one thing like that's helped you with your business? Yeah, um, lots of it. <laughs> All, you know, the, the resources are incredible. The, the back end stuff, you could tell Ben has spent so much time and thought, um, on whether it, you know, it ends up being the big money camps is one of the modules. For example, the step-by-step, -step, here's how you market, here's how you get a gym, here's how you get some insurance because you definitely need that. Here's how you can negotiate prices. Here's how, you know, like literally it's it's put together piece by piece. Here's how you set up your landing page. Here's what you should do. You should have this video that does the referrals because if you do that, you're likely going to sell out these camps. And, um, and that's just one example. Right? So for the other, like people who are training, you know, year round in person, right? he's got resources for that. And what's so special, I think about training Ben is that like my, my business model, what I'm doing is very abnormal. It's, it's very unique and he can still sit there and like take a you know, lean back in his chair and think about it for a second and say, okay, here's what I think would work. And you know, the dude's got a business mind and mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, it's been great. He's, it's been definitely well worth the investment in him mm -hmm. and i think that uh he does the right things like he's i can tell he's continuously trying to make this thing better and that's just awesome oh cool. love that love that so where where do you see the the private training industry going in the next two to five years yeah i think i think it's gonna double or or more maybe and i think a lot of people are afraid of that but they like people have kids every day, you know, <laughs> like there's, there's enough kids to go around. Really there are. So I think there's like some fear. I have friends of mine that have that fear of just acting um, mm. upon it. And that's the hardest thing about starting your own business is like, you're never going to feel ready. Mm -hmm. Even now, like I don't necessarily feel ready for all these things that I'm doing, but you just do it. Um, and so, yeah, it, it is going to, I think probably double, but that just means we have more athletes being served at a higher level mm -hmm. and that grows the game. And if you do, you, not everybody's going to be for everybody. Mm -hmm. Some kid's going to want to go train with the cool guy who can dunk and, you know, do sick hezzies and all of that. And that's okay. Like, good. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure that person doing the sick hezzies is, is teaching them really good things and you teach them what you teach. And yeah. I think having structure is this is the scary part too. And if you don't know what you're doing on the business front, it's very hard to even. It, it's cool that it's it's easy to daydream and hard to put into concrete action. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So why why do you think some coaches are scared of the industry growing? I think because of the natural competition that we all feel as coaches, former players, you. Mm -hmm think oh somebody's gonna pop up and steal my business or steal my kids and um, I think that's normal I think that's a normal feeling for for people to feel and then you also remember the AAU industry is a billion dollar industry so if you have one percent of the market even in your area is likely going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. So it's just, uh, yeah, I think it's becoming more saturated. It is, but I think that's a good thing. I think mm. at, like all kids are expecting to have a trainer now. So we need them. Yep. 
Yeah, agree. So with any coach watching this that are on the edge, they're thinking about, you know, I want to start something, but I don't feel like I'm ready. What's one piece of advice you would give them? I think there are obviously things to weigh. You know, are you going to be good not having insurance for a while while you're starting something new? Do you have a family? Does your, does your, if you have a family, does your partner, you know, could that, could your partner carry that piece for you? Um, but if, if you're, if this is something you've thought about for more than a year, then one decision can change the rest of everything. And like, I, me, I, you know, I use me as an example because like, I'm nothing special. I don't have any special, like, you know, I'm not a genius. I, you know, I, I have no idea what I'm doing on the business front. I just care very deeply about what I do and, and, you know, the impact I could possibly have. And I study my craft just like many coaches do. And it's like, really, if I can do it, I'm the, anybody could really do this. It's just like ballsy. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta, you gotta just go for it. And you listen to all these podcasts of, you know, all these, you know, rich moguls and business dudes and not like, and that's like, you know, all these, whatever, all the bros. And they're like, yeah, you just got to go for it, man. You know, that's all. <laughs> and like, they're right. <laughs> and that's really what it takes. If, if you weighed your options, it is going to be scary. You are going to struggle. Like for the first year, my bank account bounced from $200 to negative $34 to, you know, just making rent. And if you want to do something bad enough, you're willing to go through the hard stuff for it. So if you want it bad enough, then go do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Agree. Agree. So what, uh, what skills in coaching have you taken into your business? What skills in coaching? Yeah. Yeah. I'm So my, that's that's a hard question. My background is in sport and performance psychology, so having and skill acquisition. So having that kind of psychology plus motor behavior background has been very helpful. Um, and then I, I I also have a master's degree in instructional design, and so that's uh, learning how to develop curriculum. I thought was really important for me, you know, in the places that I want to take this, and also knowing how and when to give feedback how to schedule your practices, how to do, you know, how to make reps desirably difficult for athletes, all of those pieces I've taken in. And then, you know, the company PGC that I work for has incredible training for their coaches. And it's like between those two things, all the things I've learned from you know, my own educational background and then all the things I've had gotten experience doing and coaching and, and speaking with, with PGC. Um, those would probably be the two things that I brought together um, and, and who I'm presenting as, as the face of my business. Mm -hmm. I like that. So talk to us a bit about your current sales and marketing process. So how do you sell, sell and market your business? Poorly. <laughs> poorly um right now i'm i'm right now I'm, I'm building i think an audience more than anything i have my my eight or nine clients everything's happened organically i haven't really marketed much just maybe an email here or there when something new comes up um but the you know kind of the next steps for me i'm getting from ben um so starting, you know, the marketing, you know, I'm writing them in advance. So when I go on the road, then it starts rolling. I'm going to, you know, make the videos and landing pages and the, you know, all of those things, uh, schedule out social media posts, all of that. That's actually what I'm doing here in Dallas. Um, I'm just here for 30 days as a build month since all of our kids are in high school and middle school basketball right now anyway. So that's, I haven't been selling and marketing my business to answer your question, but <laughs> That's my move going forward. Okay. So how, how have you got those eight to nine clients that you're, you've worked with? How have they come? Yeah. Um, one was uh, um, her mother was our team advisor when I was a college player. And so I got her just through that 
you know, that history. And after that, mostly social media, Mm -hmm. just they, they, and I didn't have this whole process or anything set up until just recently. And so they would hit me on social media and say, Hey, can you come train my kid? And I'd jump on a meeting with them and we'd figure out a way. And I landed on a number and that number worked for a while. And then I met Ben and Ben was like, what are you the, like the mother Teresa of basketball? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> this is not <laughs> worth your time. And so he helped me restructure all of that. And mm-hmm. that's, uh, that's how I've gotten the client so far is really, I just had to get on the phone with them and let them know who I am and what I'm trying to do. And I get, I, you know, maybe it's an energy thing, but it mm-hmm. seems like the type of people that are looking for someone like me are gravitating towards the things that I'm sharing on my website, mm-hmm. on my newsletter, on my social media, those sorts of things. Cool. So you made a really great point about getting on a phone call with parents. Most coaches don't do that because either they're scared or they can't be bothered to. So how important is that? Yeah, I think you are dealing with somebody's most prized possessions in their children and if they don't hear your voice or your personality if they have no reason to be excited about wow this is the person that that's training my kid hell yeah like <laughs> that's who I want <laughs> yeah. then you're, you're not going to be able to get them there through a text message mm-hmm. and I you know I have a background in customer service actually with PGC um, which was has been super helpful in just knowing your how to show your personality through a phone call and also how to be use brevity, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. But this is uh this is the way. Like, I mean, if if you're really trying to build your business and, and a business where people come back and trust you, yeah, you gotta yeah, get on a phone call. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Like that. So where do you see your business in the next five years from now? <laughs> maybe it'll become a restaurant I don't know <laughs> <laughs> um I yeah that's I see it still being this mentorship uh type of of piece I think that is something that I believe in and mm-hmm. that I you know I have a handful of people in my mind who would come on and I would trust with these athletes so um that I can, you know, do whatever it is that I do. Maybe I get an opportunity in the WNBA or in the NBA, which I would take, like I would like to take and still have somebody carrying this legacy for me. So I think in a perfect world, that's probably it. This shooter shoot is still alive and well with, you know, people that I, I trust to maintain it. I'm running camps probably regionally. We're only the only people that can attend the camp are members of the, of the community and you know in the meantime training pros so like that so i've got one more question for you and it's a two-part one so okay. first one is what does failure mean to you and the second one is how important is taking risks what does failure mean to me yeah failure just means coming up a little short this time I think progress is only made through making mistakes. Mm-hmm. And if we never made any mistakes, we we never would get anywhere. Uh, we would never progress. So that's that piece and taking risks. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a huge risk taker. I I learned that lesson. I tried to make a living playing poker for three months of my life. And for the first two months, it was fantastic. And uh, the third month, too risky, you know, (laughs) too risky. So uh, I think, yeah, I I think if you're going to risk anything, or if you're going to bet on anything, it needs to be you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I wouldn't risk my job or my well-being or my car or anything like that but you know it is risky to start your own business but it's do you trust yourself or do you don't or don't you and that's what uh, 
I think my, personally how I feel about risk is if I'm going to risk anything, it'll be risking something on myself. Awesome. Like, like those answers. Hi, right, Brianna. It's been a pleasure having you on. Um, yeah, you. Now, if any coach watching wants to reach out to you or follow your business, follow your, your, your progress, how can, how can they do that? What's the best way to do that? Yeah. Uh, my, my socials are all the same. Um, Shooters X shoot 70 is uh are my socials on Instagram. Um, I'm on TikTok. I don't really use it. I'm trying. I'm really trying not to. And uh, Shooters X Shoot on Twitter as well. <laughs> That's uh, th those are those are me. Seventy percent or better gets you the green light. Awesome, love that. So what we'll do is we'll add that to the bottom of the video, so anyone can can go over and follow your stuff. Well, thank you so much. Awesome. All right. Well, keep up the great work, and hopefully. I can bring you on in 12 months from now and, and see where you are with your business. Wow. Yeah. Wild. Let's do it. All right. Take care. Thank you for, for coming on. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. See you.